South of Setia is a nice place. There are green hills, beer, a town, some fish, and apples, and a president who loves firing bazookas. The Caucasus has had a history of conflict. In the early 1990s, when Georgia was moving towards independence, South Ossetia and its neighbor Abkhazia fought for their own autonomy. After two years of skirmishes between the three regions, a bunch of old people signed an agreement to stop the fighting, resulting in de facto independence for South Ossetia and Abkhazia. For the next 10 years, there was a stalemate. Until in the 2000s, the Georgian leader, President... Uh... Sukashvili Offered South Ossetia autonomy Within the Georgian state They rejected this offer And instead held a referendum on the region's future 99% of the voters said yes to independence Are you worried about the possibility of conflict? Is it a serious possibility? Well, there is chance that there will be clash But we hope it won't happen In early August Georgian military launched an air and land attack on the rebellious South Ossetia, sparking the war. They focused their efforts on the capital, Sisim Valley. The next day, after intense shelling and civilian displacement, the city was taken. Saakashvili was increasingly exhibiting signs of irrational behavior, an out-of-touch ruler who used the army to kill his own civilians. The night shooting by the Georgian troops led to deaths of thousands of civilians. Russia puts it very simply, it says Georgia attacked a sleeping town. Well, Georgia was attacked by people in that town of Sink Skin Valley. The United States and our allies stand with the people of Georgia. By 2008, Georgia had received $3 billion in assistance from the United States. And their democratically elected government. But we have heard evidence that civilians were killed when troops opened fire using artillery and tanks indiscriminately at people who were sleeping in tower blocks. That surely is wrong. We clearly, and I clearly, gave orders. Uh, I have signed an order to recognize the independence of South Ossetia and the independence of Abkhazia by the Russian Federation. And that is the tit for tat that I have talked about from the beginning. Then, the Russians counterattacked. With superior manpower flooding across the border, the occupying forces were quickly overwhelmed, prompting a Georgian retreat and the occupation of the city by Russia. With its actions in recent days, Russia has damaged its credibility and its relations with the nations of the free world. Then, the Russians went even further. First, they advanced into Georgian territory and occupied Gorok. Then, in the coming days, they began their march towards the Georgian capital, Tbilisi. But if we take the camera and move it in as close as we can, you'll see the outline of perhaps hundreds of soldiers. They're based right around Tbilisi, and they're all waiting for the Russian advance. Residents are stocking up on basic supplies to prepare for the prospect of a Russian invasion. Bullying and intimidation are not acceptable ways to conduct foreign policy in the 21st century. After the deaths of hundreds of civilians and the displacement of several thousand more, and in the midst of a humanitarian crisis, the international community was voicing a strong approval for a peaceful resolution to the conflict. An international delegation, led by French President Nicolas Sarkozy, helped broker a six-point peace plan between Georgia and Russia. His conditions demanded the immediate halt of all hostilities, the withdrawal of both nations' armies to their prior positions, and free access to humanitarian aid. In one week, in one month, the complete withdrawal of Russian forces from Georgia, except Ossetia and Abkhazia. And so the war ended. Over 200 civilians were killed, hundreds of soldiers were wounded or dead, and 150,000 civilians became refugees, with some estimates totaling 200,000. Two new states have emerged. Both Georgia and Russia return to their pre-war positions, with the crucial difference being that Russia now occupies South Ossetia and Abkhazia. The two countries pretend to be friendly. Eight points go to Russia! And the tensions remain. Well, that was pointless, wasn't it?